Can I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of John. Go to the book of John chapter 3. This is the verse that we all know. Chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your grace and your love, and thank you for your peace. And thank you for giving us this word today, narrate it to us, explain it to us, Lord, through your spirit, so that we may understand in Jesus' name. Amen. Where well, we have just read, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. We are going to speak today about unconditional love. The love that God has shown unto us as men. The Bible says, For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. So what we have just read, the Bible says, because of the love of the Lord, because of the heart of the Lord, when God was seated in heaven, looking at our lives, me and you, the way we were living and the way we were going about doing things, God decided not because there was anybody who told him to do so, not because God was looking at the issue of he was going or he is going to find anything in return, God, because of his love to mankind, remember, God is the one who created the heavens and created all the earth. Hallelujah. So now, because of his love towards men, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, man was created in the image of God. So, when man started to fade or go away or move away from the presence of the Lord, God's heart or God started to be envious of what is happening in the life of man because when God created us, he was loving us. Hallelujah. Now, when God looked at, at us when we were living on earth and we were fading, going away, running away, far away from his presence, God saw it right for him to send his only begotten son by the name of Jesus to come to earth and come and die for our sins. Now, when God was doing all of that, God was doing it to show his perfect or persistent or unconditional love to the man that he created. Hallelujah. Remember, I've just said right now, God created us in love. In other words, he has loved us so much. That is why he created us in his own likeness and image. So, when he sent his son, remember, there was nothing that God was going to get when he sent Jesus to come and die for us. The only thing that God wanted us, or wanted, that he wanted uh, to, to come to pass or to happen, is that men must come back to him. Now, because of this edge or this cry, let me say so, from God. God descended Jesus to come and 
die for us unconditionally god sent jesus to come and die for us when we were still sinners still living in our own sin not understanding where we are going or not understanding what we were doing hallelujah now when god has sent jesus to come and die for us so what he was showing unto us mankind is unconditional love can you tell somebody that is close to you unconditional love i want us to understand something that is why i'm trying to explain this love of the lord when you have unconditional love you don't love because there are conditions when you have unconditional love you don't love because you will benefit when you have unconditional love you don't love because you will be loved in return when you have unconditional love you love because it is one of your characters or your lifestyle to have love i believe we will understand as we shall be going on reading the word of the lord that when we have also as children of god this kind of love that does not demand from the other person or the other side to show anything unto us but we just go on doing that which god expect us to do as his children loving unconditionally hallelujah now this unconditional love if at the end you can go to the book of first corinthians chapter 13 many of us we know it it explains the kind of love that god has for us it explains the kind of love that we must have as christians now in the book of first john chapter 4 if we may go and read it i want us to read verse 8 or let us start from 7 7 and 8 it says beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone who loves is born of god and knows god hallelujah in other words if you and me we can start loving or start developing this which i may call character of loving it means we are one of the offsprings of god himself hallelujah hallelujah can you ask the person that is close to you are you an offspring of god now in verse 8 it says he who does not love does not know god for god himself is love how sarati when you don't love or you don't love any other person or any other creature as you are supposed to as a child of god you are not of god but the bible says when you love you are of god in other words you are an offspring of god when you love it means you have been born of god when you love it means that which god has started by sending jesus you want to go forward with it and doing it because you love him hallelujah hallelujah now most of us christians children of god we have a problem when we come to this kind of love most of us we do not have unconditional love we have love that is having conditions i'm loving you because you are uh, my brother i am loving you because um you give me money i am loving you because uh you drive a better car i am loving you because i'm loving you because the love that we have as children of god or as people is a love that is attached to something else now the love that the lord is trying to pre 
dict unto us today or show us is that we must love in Zulu they say no makanjani we must love even if there is nothing that we are going to benefit out of this love and the Bible says we love because God himself is love in other words if we are born of God we are offsprings of God and if we are offsprings of God it means somewhere somehow we are identified or we have an identity of God and one of the identities of God that we must have that identifies us as children of God must be love hallelujah hallelujah and now when we love as children of God we must love unconditionally can you tell the person that is close to you love unconditionally when you are born again when you are a child of God you must have love for each and every person now let me try to explain unto you why I say this kind of love most of the time we love because we want to be loved back I love you my sister because I want you to love me also but now the kind of love that God is showing us is that love that says I love you because you have been created by God even though you hate me but I love you even though you don't understand me but I love you even though the things that I'm doing does not go hand in hand with uh, what you think or what you perceive I still love you in other words we love each other why because we have been born by the same blood the blood that is in God hallelujah hallelujah now one of the identities or one thing that identifies us is the God's let me call it not God's God's kind of love the Bible says God himself is love isn't it now because now God is love when he loves he does not look at where you are coming from or where you are going he just loves you and saves you by grace and when you are saved by grace then it comes from you to take the identity that God has given unto you of loving one another as children of God and we go on showing the world that we are children of God and we love each other so much that is why the Bible says this is how people are going to know you when you love each other as God has loved you this is the only thing that we are shooting to be able to do it as children of God love one another hallelujah can you ask the person that is close to you do you love me so now when you love you only look at the identity that God has given you can you tell the person that is close to you God has given me an identity and this identity that I'm having forces me to love this which God has given me that is inside of me tells me to love anyway anyhow even if situations does not agree with me I must just love even if the things are not going the way that I want I must just do what love I have read there in the Bible, the Bible says, when we love, we are showing that we abide with God. When we love, we show that God also himself abides with us. He is here with us. He always moves with us. Now when you are abiding with God and God is moving and staying with you, it means in each, each and every step that you are going to take, God will be taking that, taking that step with you. You will never fail in any way in every step that you take. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, because God has loved us in the beginning, we are told as children of God that we must love. 
We must love one another. And when we love one another, we are going to show the whole world that indeed we are children of God. This is what we are lacking as children of God. To love a person is not to give the person money. Hmm? I might be in love with you, but I don't give you money. But I love you. Okay. You might not be giving me money. But I must love you. Do you know why? Because you are an image of God and the Bible is telling me or commanding me to love you. Hallelujah. Even if the things that you are doing are not going hand in hand with what I'm believing in or what I'm doing, I must love you. And if we can love one another as children of God, I am telling you the bond that we will have as children of God will be a mighty waking bond that will shake the foundation of hell. Why? Because we will be loving each other. The Bible says when Jesus left, when he left the apostles, when they started doing their ministry, it says always the way we know, we, we always in one accord. In other words, the way in one heart. And the Bible says in everything that they will have, they will share among each other equally. Why? Because they loved each other. Hmm? Now, because they were loving each other, the Bible says, These gospel reached many. And when the gospel reached many, Baba, with some of them, some of other people, when they hear about apostles, they will just join them. Not even understanding what is going on. Why? Because the Christians of them were having love. Hallelujah. So then it means unto us as children of God, if we love one another, there is a high percentage of possibility that people, when they are outside, when they look at us, they will love what, they are, what we are doing and they will love to come and join in what we are doing. People are not joining in and coming and join us in what we are doing. The issue is we don't love each other. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we don't love each other? I will explain to you why I say we don't love each other. He who does not love does not know God. You don't know God. When you don't love, you don't do what? You don't know God because God is love. If you were knowing God himself, the creator, you would love each and every one. I have already explained what love does not mean I have to give you money. Or I have to give you one, two, three that you need. Love is an identity. It's something that is inside of me. Let me tell you, children of God, even if I'm hating you each and every day, the only thing that is needed from you as a child of God is to love me. For God to be able to change my heart because I'm hating you. It's you to love me unconditionally. Even though I'm doing whatever that I'm doing to you, then God will change my heart so that I can be able to see that you love me. So now this thing kind of is not happening. Why? Because even when I discover that you don't love me, I want to show you back that I also don't love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you love me? In verse 9 where we were reading, right in First John, it says, In this the love of God was manifested towards us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. 
so that we might live through him. Now when God sent Jesus, he wanted us to have life. Life that does not have boundaries. Life that we can reach wherever we want to reach. Sorry, Bupilobo, this life, for us to have it, this love must be there in us. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have this kind of love? Do you think you have this kind of love? Do you think you are living according to love? I thank God I've, I've been here for quite some time and quite a long time. Now, amongst us, you'll find that there are people who even get ahead that today I'm wearing my spectacles. And others, they get ahead because today my hair does not look good. You'll find that in our midst, amongst us, as pedibari, one little hoopy hoopy. Kuru no hoopy while they can dress in one. In English, even small things, they take you out of the right way. Things that does not even matter. Just that I passed you, I didn't see you, and I didn't greet you. It becomes an issue. Just that on Sunday I didn't come to you and say how are you. It becomes an issue. Just because on Sunday after church I just left and I was never able to speak with you. It becomes something else. Let me tell you children of God. If we don't have that love. This is what I believe in. If I have anything with you, if I keep quiet, it means I've erased it from my heart. But if I feel I cannot go forward, having not resolved that which is troubling me, I have to come to you. And when I come to you, I'm going to talk to you in love and show you that this year and there and then, we didn't settle things the way we were supposed to settle them. Can we settle them as brothers and sisters so that we can be able to go on with life tomorrow for the sake of the glory of the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you think you love somebody? Do you believe you are in love with somebody? Hallelujah. Let us read in the same chapter, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God. And God in him. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have love? If you are doing things according to love, it means God is there in you. If you are not doing things according to love, it means God is far away from you. So ask the person that is close to you, do you have love? What about the issue of yesterday? What, which, what, what about that which you have done yesterday? I'm not saying I know what you have done. I get I'm just giving an example. You know, when we are speaking about love, this is what I'm hearing in my heart. Some of us here, we are able to see that there and then and there, we didn't live according to love. Some of us, it is even more predictable and you are able to see it quite closely and clearly you will find it out from the way people act and the way people talk and the way people do their things or yes I agree 
Mama Ruti is saved. He's a child of God. Marale ratolo na aliyo. Love is not there. Now, as Christians, as children of God, can we go and check in the way we do things if we are doing them in love? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we doing our things in love? Do you think we are predicting or we are showing the love that God is having for us? If what we are doing is showing the love that God is having for us, now why are there quarrels and disputes in our midst? Why our friendships are not going forward the way God wants them to go forward? Why our things are not moving the way God wants them to move? It is because we don't have love. Yes, we do have love, but not the love that God wants us to have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close, do you have the love that God wants you to have? Are you moving in the kind of love that God wants us to have? Now, if we read in the book of John chapter 14, verse 23, verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. The person who loves him will keep his word. And my father will love him. Why? Because the person is keeping the word of God. And we will come to him and make our home with him. In other words, the Bible is saying unto us, if we say we love him, Christ, God, the word, his word, will abide with us. Or oh, his word, we will be able to keep, to keep it, to learn from it, to be taught by it, to be guided by the word. And when these things happen to us, Jesus said to them, Nali Papa, me and my father, we will come and make a home in you. Why? Because this word is staying in you. Why? Because you are loving the way God loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me try to explain this. When you have the love of God, and when you have the word of God in you, the word of God dwelling in your spirit, in your body, in your soul, meditating upon the word day in and day out, it becomes easy, I'll put it this way, for the remote of the Holy Spirit to direct you wherever you go. When you have the word of God in you, I agree, Jesus is the word, isn't it? Now when we have the word, it means Jesus is in us. Now, when Jesus is in us, because he sent the Holy Spirit to come and stay with us, it becomes easy for the Holy Spirit to take us or lead us to wherever place he wants us to go. Can you tell the person that is close to you, Poso? Mistake. You don't find yourself having done something mistake. Why? Because there is a Holy Spirit in you that is a remote, I'll call it like that, to whatever action that you take. Now when you have this remote, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit is a remote. When you have this remote, it becomes difficult for you to find yourself in channel one when you want to be in channel two. Are you getting me? In other words, when the Holy Spirit wants you to be in channel 2, you will go to channel 2, you want to go to channel 1. Now, when the Holy Spirit is not there in you, when you want to go to channel 2, you, want, you, you will find yourself being in channel what? 
one. Why? Because the word is not in you. The Holy Spirit is not in you. Now when the word is in you, when the word is speaking with your life, it becomes easier for the love of God to grow in you. Hallelujah. It becomes easier for you to be able to reach where you are supposed to reach because of the word that is in you. When the word is in you, Mupuloswa, a Christian, God can work in the life of this Christian easily. Why? Because the word is there in him. If the word of God is saying you must love, you just go and love. If the word of God is saying stand, you stand. Sit, you sit. Go, you go. Come, you come. Why? Because this word is the one that is directing every way that you take and every step that you take. Now Jesus answered and said to them, If now you love, we and my father, we come and sit and stay in you. Now I will ask a question. If God the Father is there in you, what is it that you fail each and every day when we come to the issue of loving? How can you fail when God himself is in you? Okay. Then the move vendor. I'm a vendor by birth. So now, when I am vendor, there is nothing that pertains to, 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 to my nationality that I won't be able to understand. Why? Because I am vendor. Are you understanding me? Because you are petty. There is nothing that pertains to your nationality that you won't understand. If now when you are paid, you come to me and you give me a traditional clothes of pedis, I might not agree to wear them. Do you know why? Because I'm not paid. Maybe I'll ask you one or two questions before I wear the, the, the traditional clothes. Why? Because I don't understand the reason of wearing them. Today in the morning, my daughter said, she told us on Monday that at school, they say because the school will be closed, today they must wear heritage clothes. And she asked me, what is it that I'm going to wear? And I said, we shall see. The problem of her asking is this. She has never seen traditional clothes of vendors. <laughs> the only thing that she knows is tights and t-shirts and dresses and skirts and everything. Now when she asks, she wants to know how is she going to identify herself because she tells her friends that I'm vendor, but she cannot speak vendor, but she's vendor. Now how is she going to identify herself amongst her friends because she said she's vendor, but she doesn't know what is it that she's going to wear today. Are you hearing me? Now, because we are Christians, there is God in us. Now, why can we not identify ourselves with the God that is in us, with the culture of our vendor that is in me? If God is in me, it means Lerato, this love, I must be having it anyhow or anyway. One way or the other, I must love. That is why the Bible will go on and say, even if they ridicule you, even if they curse you, even if they insult you, hmm, be happy because your reward in heaven is great. I get it. Why do you have to worry? You have love in you. When all these things are happening around you, the only thing that you do is what? Love. When things are not working for you, the only thing that you have to do is to do what? It's love. Okay, well, they might be hating me. They might not be loving me. But I love them even though they don't love me. This is what the Bible told me to do. 
I must love my brothers and everyone unconditionally. So now when you love unconditionally, when God abides in you, stays in you, it becomes easy for you to get a reward from heaven because heaven is staying with you. Heaven is inside of you. Heaven is with you. There is nothing that you do when heaven is not talking. There is nothing that you do when heaven is not commanding. There is nothing that you do when heaven didn't tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you love me? Before Jesus was crucified, he went to Peter and asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me more than this? And when Peter was answering, Jesus would say to him, take care of my sheep. Tend to my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus wanted to know if Peter was going to be able to go forward with the love that he taught them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask again the person that is close to you, do you love me? Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 says, Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. When you love the Lord with all your heart, it means there is no quarter, there is no section of your heart that is loving any other thing except loving God. When you love the Lord with all your mind, it means in your mind there is nothing else that is reigning or ruling. Only the word of God is ruling in your mind. Hallelujah. When you love the Lord with all your soul, it means you have taken your soul unto him and him alone. And you are agreeing that he is the one that he has to lead you in everything that you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, all in all, today, we are learning that as children of God, we must love unconditionally. Can you tell the person that is close to you, love unconditionally? So somebody can then ask me and say, Mama, even if they insult me, must I love them unconditionally? I will say yes. It will amaze you. Lerato, love. It's not this love that I love you. It's a lie. Can you tell the person that is close to you? It's a lie. Some of, some of the times, you know, we sit together as children of God and say, hey, you know, my brother, I love you so much. Mm -mm. That brother who's saying I love you so much is the one who will kill you so much. Are you hearing me? I love most of the time to speak with people that will come to me and say, Mama, can I talk to you? I've got this and this and this. And I will say to the person, can you learn to keep quiet and close your mouth? When I say so, it's because of this reason. The person that which you are sharing with everything about you is the person who knows you better. And now when this person knows you better, he is the person that can betray you better. And when this person betrays you better, he is the person again that can kill you better. Because this person knows what? Your weak points, your up points, your downfall, your upfall, and everything about you. If you can't live a little, for Jesus, I understand it was the plan of God. I get it? Now, it was a plan of God that Jesus must go and die for our sins at Calvary. 
Marajanong, those ones who wanted to kill him was having a problem. They couldn't identify him. They didn't know how they are going to know him because when he was with his disciples, they looked alike. No, they wanted somebody who was close. Who can identify him for them? So that they can be able to, to kill the right person. Now, when Judas heard that these people are going to pay the person who will identify Christ for them, he went there because by those days, in those times, he was the one who was holding what? Money. When people give whatever they are giving him, he's the one who will manage it. That is why when that lady came and poured out that expensive oil and wiped it out with her hairs, wiping the feet of Jesus, Judas Iscariot is the one who said, we might have sold it for a better price. Hmm? And we would have used the money for something better. In other words, he loved money and the love of God was no longer with him. So that is why when time came for Jesus to die, he was a door to the death of Christ. Because he loved what? Money. If he didn't love money more than Christ, he would have stayed back like others. Maybe somebody from outside might be might have been the one who will come and say, that one is the one. But now, because in him, the love, the real love was no longer there. The love of money was there. He went on the other side, took the money, and said, the one that I'm going to hug and kiss is the one. So now when he, they, they, they came, he hugged and kissed a Jesus. And now, when he was alone, when he came back into his senses, this man I was eating with him, this man I was working with him, I'm not well known because of him. Everything he was doing, I was doing it with him. When he was alone, when he looked at the money, he found that that money was worthless. When he compares the money with the life of Jesus, and he went to hang himself. He wouldn't have hanged himself if there was joy in him, in what he has done. Now what he has done, he didn't do it out of love. The kiss was not a kiss of life. The kiss was a kiss of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now love is not an issue of me coming to you every day and saying, Church, I love you so much. I must show this love by the way I portray or handle myself when I am with you. If I love you, I will never allow you to go out of the way. If I love you, I will come to you and reprimand you. If I love you, if there is anything wrong that I'm seeing, I will come and talk with you about it. If I love you as a child of God, I will direct you and give you better advices so that you can live a better life tomorrow. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Now when we are born again, when we are children of God, we are each and everyone's helper. And we are each and everyone's keeper. That's what the Bible says. When you are seated at this, I have to look at you, you look at me. When there is something wrong in me, you come and rectify it. When there is something wrong in you, I come and rectify it. And when there is something that is not going right with you, I will come and rectify you as long as I am able to see that which is wrong in you. How many wrongs have you seen me doing and you didn't come and tell me that I'm doing wrong? How many words have I spoken that I didn't speak right with you and you didn't even bother to come and tell me you didn't speak right with me. In all these things that you are doing, are you showing me that you love me? I'm not speaking about me precisely. I'm just giving an example, isn't it? Another person you are living with each and every day, there is something that is wrong about him or her. 
There is something wrong that he or she is doing each and every day. Why are you allowing this particular person to do this thing that is wrong each and every day? And you just keep quiet about it. Knowing that whatever this person is doing is wrong. And at the end of the day, you tell yourself and others that I love my brother. But there is something wrong about your brother that you see and you are not speaking about it. Do you love the brother? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you love the brother? I believe that when we love each other as Christians, the unconditional love that God is talking about. Reclova in Pedi. A church that does not have any spot. A church that nobody will find anything wrong in it. When somebody comes in our midst as children of God right now, he doesn't find any difference from me and you. When that person comes to you and starts speaking about me, you say, mm -mm, don't speak about my mom. When somebody comes to you, sister, and pick about the sister, you say, mm -mm, don't speak about my sister. If there is anything that is wrong, go tell her. Or if you want to go with me to tell her, let's go and we tell her. There is something that I saw some years ago, they did doing it. When you go to his office and you say, eh, Mama did this and this and this to me. He will say, okay, don't worry. Wait here, I'm coming. And he goes out and calls Mama. I'm just giving an example by me. And I come and sit there and say, tell her. Tell her what you're talking about. Now, you were biting me. You are not longer able to say whatever you were saying. But if you love me faithfully and in reality, when he say, come and explain whatever you were saying to me, you will explain and say, Daddy, I've seen Mama doing this and this and this and this. And for me, I don't think it is good. I want Mama to change this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we love each other to an extent that we will rectify each other for the glory of the name of the Lord? When we love each other, we rectify each other. When we love each other, sometimes we call each other to the corner and we speak right things to each other so that we may be able to reach heaven. The goal here is not to come to church and to sit in the church and become blessed. The goal here is to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am finishing. The same verse that I said, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. There is something that I want us to look at there. 13, 4 to 8. It says, love suffers long. That's number one. Love is kind. Does not envy. Does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love does not think evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. And love right rejoices always in the truth. I believe I've read 10 things that love does not do. And the 11th one said, it rejoices in the truth. In other words, if you have love, you have the truth. Hallelujah. In all these things that I've read, if you can check yourself in all these ten things that I've read, where do you think you are failing? We are not able to endure situations. We are not kind. 
We are envious. We parade ourselves, we speak of our own self. Very much puffed up. We have a lot of pride. We behave rudely and we seek of our own benefit. We are selfish. We are provoked so easily. We think evil about everything and we rejoice in iniquity. Because if there is something wrong that we have to speak about, we don't. And we call it, we'll be betraying our friends. Continue to means we are not acting in love. And the Bible says, love rejoices in the truth. Hallelujah. In other words, the Bible is telling us, if you have love, you have the truth. Then I will ask you, do you think you have the truth? Ask the person that is close to you. Do you think you have the truth? Do you think you are walking in love? Do you think you are doing things according to love? Do you think you are behaving according to the love of God? Do you think the way you talk, you are talking because you are inspired by love? Hallelujah. If your answer is no, can we all stand up? Everything that we do must pertain to love. We must do it being inspired by love. We must do it because we love God and we love our brothers and sisters. Can we all pray? And we pray, Father, help us. We want to have love. We want to walk in love. Let us pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let us pray, let us pray. Lord, I want to have life. I want to have love. When I have love, I will live. When I have love, I will reach my destiny. When I have love, you come and abide with me. When I have love, your spirit dwells with me. When I have love, I am led by your spirit. When I have love, your word leads my way. Wherever I go, I'm led by your spirit and your word. And whatever I do, I am led by you. I won't fail because you will be abiding in me. I won't fall because I will be walking with you. I won't fall because your grace and your love is with me. Your power and your anointing is there in my life. Pray, pray, pray and ask God to share this love into your heart. Allow God to share this love into your heart. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in you so that this love can also be found in you. We need this love so that we can be able to go forward. Because if we have this love, many of the sad sins that we hear and we see, we won't be able to fall in them because we will do everything according to love. Let us pray, 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 pray. Pray, O oh God Almighty, Jehovah, the Lord of heaven and earth, help us today, Father. Help us today, Jesus. Help us today, mighty God. Help us, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Almighty God, the I am that I am. Glory be to God in the highest. Father, thank you. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. Father, I adore your mighty, precious name. Father, I bless your holy name. Lord, I want to love as you have loved me. Father, I want to love as you have loved the world. I want to love as you have shared your love in our hearts. As you have poured this love into our hearts. Allow us, Lord, to be led by you. Allow us, Lord, to be directed by you. Allow your spirit to lead us in every step of the way. Direct us, almighty God, lead us, Jehovah. 
Oh, glory be unto God in the highest. My God, my Father, creator of heaven and earth. Your holy, your holy, your holy Father, your great. Yalabas sotero shikara bayende. Yendalabas yatroko shiana. Even if I break, Lord, I will stand again. Even if I fall, Lord, I will stand again. Let your love stay in me, Father God. Let your peace be visible in my life. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Just put it there. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes, raise your hands up. I want to pray with somebody who's saying, Lord, I don't have this love in my heart. I am not walking in love. Everything I do, I don't do it in love. There are so many things that I'm doing, Lord, but not in love. So God, help me today. I want you to change my heart. I want to have a heart that loves everyone, cares for everyone, see the needs of others, and cry to meet them. Lord, I want to have a caring heart. If you are praying in your heart today, and you are saying, Lord, change my heart today. Can you run and come to the front? Say, Lord, I have a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger. The words that come after of my mouth, the things I do, they don't show that I'm doing them in love. God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. I'm full of hatred, even though I don't have a reason of hating. And when I hate, I say, it is the way that I am. That's the way I am. It's no according to the word of God. God created you to be a creature that loves. Let us love one another as a church of God. Appreciate one another. Advise one another. Speak good about one another. Lead each other to righteous path. Close your eyes, raise your hands. I want you to pray after me and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. You have loved me unconditionally. I am a sinner, but still you love me. But today, Lord, I'm standing before you. Change my heart change my life. I want to love the way you love. I want to speak the way you speak. I want to walk the way you walk. Your word says if I have love you and the Father will come and abide in me from today Lord I want to love I want to love unconditionally I want to love everyone 
I want to have a heart of love. Thank you, Jesus, for this change in me. Thank you, Jesus, for a life turned around. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a new heart, giving me a new language, giving me a new way of life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being my guider from today, for being my leader from today, for walking with me from today. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands and thank the Lord as you are going back to your seats. God bless you and God grants you your heart desires.